Hi, my name is John Hemsworth. Uh, I'm an architect. I live and work here in Vancouver. Um, I have a design practice and we've been quite uh, lucky to have worked across the province in a lot of different communities. Um, so I can get this up and running. Um, a lot of that obviously has happened on the traditional unceded territories of a lot of different First Nations groups. But more than that, we've actually had the, the privilege of working directly with these communities and the development of their own communities. Um, this is the Gitsan with the Upper Skinner Recreation Center. And in the light of the kind of terrible and ongoing news that's happened um, kind of historically in the country and continues, um, this is a project that is of some interest, at least for our point of view. We, uh, we approach it with a total collaboration with the local community. Um, doing things like building it so that the, the walls and the roof panels here could be locally constructed and kind of both build capacity in the community and also kind of some trade training and ideally leaving some money there as well too. Um, if you're interested in this, because what it does do is it doesn't really make it up for obviously what's happened, but it does show the resiliency of these people and, and how they're kind of actively engaged in their own communities. Um, go to Google Upper Recreation, Upper Skeena Recreation Center YouTube, and you can see a short video. I won't play it now, I don't have time. Um, aligning ourselves with those same sort of ideas of kind of social and cultural sensitivity is an idea that as a practice that we need to be kind of sustainably uh, at the forefront. Um, a lot of the work we do is mass timber, passive house, prefabrication. Uh, as an example, this is a project that the foot of Lonsdale um, it's uh, built a CLT glue lamb structure, uh, prefabricated panels on the outside, quite complicated, uh, a restaurant on the ground floor, offices above. Um, it's, uh, it was constructed, the main, uh, the main buildings constructed in 10 days. Um, and I think kind of represents the type of work we're doing and the type of work we continue to do um, quite well. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the studio. Um, so we are going to base a studio in Hakuba, Japan. Uh, and to be 100% clear, we're not going to Japan. So unfortunately, uh, we'll be here, which isn't bad. But uh, don't buy a ticket. Um, Hakuba is a small town in uh, kind of a farming community in uh, just north of Nagano where the Winter Olympics were. You might ask yourself why and how do we get to this project? And it's related to BC Wood that did the preliminary studies for the arena. They've kind of identified a, um, a project in this town that I think uh, will we'll use mass timber as a kind of means to kind of do it, but it's also kind of dealing with some kind of forces um, between the kind of local residents and the kind of ongoing development of the uh, of the ski industry. Uh, Kikuba, it was noted, um, it's a really remote little part of the world, but it was the downhill cross country and ski jumping location for the 98 uh, Winter Olympics. Um, there's about 10,000 people that live there full time. It's an aging population as well. But because of the tourist industry there, they managed to keep uh, um, like a higher percentage of kind of young people, which a lot of the rural areas in Japan haven't been able to do. Um, but they are facing problems. And one of them is that their infrastructural kind of concerns, both the existing community library, which is quite small, and the daycare facility, which is really important in the community, have both come to the end of their functional life. Um, in contrast, the ski industry is looking to kind of have more facilities to bring people there. So kind of meeting space, event space, different kinds of ways of kind of using the um, local resources to their benefit, which is, you know, great. But there's a political disjunction has developed between these, these mountains. There's about eight different mountains in this little valley um, and their guests and then the local communities. So the local mayor and the, and the council have got together and they've decided to build a new facility that would kind of bridge the gap here between kind of a library, a daycare, and an event space. And how that might come to be is the kind of is the balance of the studio. Um, we'll talk a lot about as we get into the project um, about this very specific community. But more importantly, from my uh, kind of perspective, is what I took as a student at UBC. Um, I was quite lucky graduating to kind of get to design a building almost right out of the gate. Um, what was the beginning of an understanding of a design methodology. And so we will focus on the means 
of doing this as kind of the underpinning and the backbone of the studio. Um, I think that what's become clear to me over years of practice is that your means of investigation kind of dictate what happens. And so if we look at clues for successful people who've done this, look at Morales and Pinos and the way that they drew um, a repetitive approach to drawing, um, looking at kind of specifics and qualities and then kind of exposing them and digging repetitively, repetitively, repetitively into it and then testing it formally. Um, this is a little kind of little sketch of the chapel um, and you can see how that they're changing uh, scale as they go through the drawings they're unfolding them and doing projections and trying to get a sense of what that space might be like and then testing it formally um, so we kind of try to do the same thing obviously not to the same level but the it, within the studio this is a chapel we're working on in whistler um, so again as soon as we have a plan we have a site we kind of take our directions from the site then we test it formally and what does that mean and that means building little models, testing it, going back to the drawings, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, then we do use a digital kind of technologies and um, 3D modeling and, and looking at different ways of kind of incorporating the actual construction into our kind of designs and where the kind of friction happens between the two. Um, but to be clear, if you were looking at this studio as a digitally driven studio, it would not be that it would be we're using the digital technologies as a kind of means of representation and exploration where it was using drawing and modeling as a way of generating the ideas um, and again kind of getting into the kind of level of detail of something that kind of transcends a little bit beyond the traditional kind of studio where you only spend a certain amount of time and you only get so far we're going to spend the whole term uh, on this one project and then we do use obviously digital uh, ways of communicating, but again, it's representational, not generative. The studio will be broken down across kind of the, the 13 weeks. First couple of weeks, we'll talk about gathering, um, how people kind of come together. More so than that though, we'll start working on our modeling and our drawing skills as a way of representing those kind of opportunities and, and inevitabilities. Um, we'll spend the time as a group talking about siting and this community and how we're going to kind of go about, because we can't go, how we're going to go about kind of coming to a collective understanding of the place. And we'll start scheming. We'll have some guest crits come in. Um, we're going to do one day trip, which will be going to uh, Pemberton to see a BC Passive House factory we designed a number of years ago. Um, and on the way back, we will come in to uh, Whistler to see the, the little library, which is about the same scale as the project we're working on. And then there's another uh, large span project that we've done in, in Squamish that we'll stop in and look at as well too. And I do think this is important to kind of connect these ideas to the built environment and what actually happens on site. So I, I, it'll be a day, it'll be a full day, but we'll be up and back. Um, and we'll do some readings kind of talking about how these ideas between urban and rural and the blurring of it kind of can affect both this community, but also how it's translatable to other situations, both here and kind of across the country. Uh, we'll get back into scheming and kind of playing this back and forth out. It'll be a lot of work back and forth, um, kind of trying to find an essence for each of your projects. That would be something we can kind of follow through more guest crits, more kind of like what would we would used to call substantial completion, like a place where you're, okay, I know what I'm doing now. Now, how do I represent it? How do I hone the presentation? And that'll be the last part, final presentations. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I hope you're interested. Um, we will be in class on next Friday. Um, be safe. Hopefully this is the last time uh, we're gonna meet uh, over Zoom. Um, I would suggest that if, kind of balancing out the studio, my expectation would be is that the work happens in the studio, that you use the resources of your other um, students and friends and uh, compatriots to kind of be able to explore your work at a kind of fairly detailed level. Thank you for your time. Uh, I look forward to answering questions. Take care. Thanks.